Welcome to Level M Diecast, everybody. Diecast Hall, episode 35. This week just happens to be exactly half of 70 as we roll into Matchbox Convention Week. Uh, we're going to start this off with uh, no Matchbox in this hall. There's a reason for that. All right, Smokey and the Bear. This is Series 2 from Greenlight. There are a few models in here that I picked up that uh, I've been looking for. There are four in the whole set, but I've only found three thus far. Um, I have pre-cut these, so I don't have to worry about these. 1980 Dodge Ram D150, first-generation Ram. Uh, one of the first, um, you know, regular retail releases. For this particular casting, there's been a lot of special editions. There's been a lot of hobby exclusives and stuff. This one is pretty awesome. There is Smokey and the Bear snapping the matchstick, saying, do not light that matchstick. Pretty cool. With the American flag in the background, do like that deal there. Prints look fantastic. Nice American flag on the uh, plate. Looks good. Steelies on this guy. Prints look pretty good. Smokey and friends, don't play with matches. Just don't do it. Deets on the back look pretty good. Chrome bumper, of course, front and rear. It's pretty decent casting. The um, bed is uh, separate than the cab. We've already seen some of these additions. Take a look at the base deets here. Number is right down here. 2970 looks like is the number on this particular one. So pretty average number. So we'll take the average number. Next one that we've come across, 1965 Nissan Patrol. I do collect this particular casting as well. I know you guys know that I'm a Mopar guy, but uh, this casting I am particularly fond of. I do like this casting. It's pretty good. Pretty sure I have all of them. Pretty sure. There is our Nissan Patrol. And then, of course, there is good old Smokey on the side. Just kind of saying, hi, what's up? What's going on? Prevent forest fires, please, he says. He's asking, please. Very much, please. Um, I like the little Smokies on the bumper in the front. Looks cool. There is Smokey again on the hood. Some black stripes for the matte black top, which, of course, is removable. Very, very stiff. There we go. There we go. There is the removable top. Couple benches in the back. Prevent forest fires, please. It's pretty uh, pretty repetitive. But I think you get the idea of what they're going for. Base deeds here. 1192 is the number. I like the, uh, basically the separate, uh, you know, kind of uh, frame. And then the bodies on the top, which is kind of cool. Really like that, that look. Oof, this thing is super hard. There we go. Ka chink All right. We got one more in the Smokey and the Bandit Realm 2021 Jeep Gladiator. This does come with a canoe. Canoe, canoe, canoe. Um, unfortunately, uh, there's no way to attach the canoe, um, which is a green light thing for sure. So there is the canoe on the top. We'll pull the Gladiator out. The canoe is in there precariously. There is the canoe. Does say Smokey on it. Looks pretty cool. It is all brown, but then it is painted with blue and stuff on the outside. It's actually uh, pretty decent details for a canoe. Looks pretty good. This, of course, is the Gladiator. Uh, this one is pretty cool. I do like the blue, yellow, and red um, kind of striping on the side. It says Prevent Forest Fires. White wheels on the white uh, model looks pretty good. Deco in the front looks pretty good as well. There is Smokey with a red print. I think that's kind of cool. Kind of gives off a kind of uh, red, white, and blue flare there. It looks pretty good. Other details on the other side. Of course, Smokey in the back as well. This one's pretty cool. This one's pretty cool. Looks like a little bit of a quality issue right there. Looks just a little bit. Good old green light for you. This one does have a plate on it, which is pretty rare. Does say Smokey on it. Not sure what plate that is, but it surely looks like a Michigan plate. So we'll just go with that. There's a bumper sticker on there. Might be too much to read. Of course, it says just prevent forest fires, because of course it does. Oh, and there, look at that. A little Smokey in the back window. A little Smokey in the back window is pretty cool. I don't know if I can get that to focus. 
It was there for a minute. It was there for a minute. It's really, really small. Anyways, you're supposed to just let the boat sit there. It's just supposed to sit there like that. Um, it looks good when it's sitting there like that, but uh, it doesn't attach. So there's no way to attach it. All right, we got a couple of new super rigs from Hot Wheels. This is a re-release. This is the Rock and Race. This is not a new model, not a new deco, um, but I didn't have this one. So uh, I did have to pick this one up. Luckily for me, there is this particular mix on the back. It is all reissues, but there is one recolor for the Baja Battalion. Yes, we have the Baja Battalion. Uh, take a look at that guy next. So we'll get our Rock and Race out of here. Throw that out. There is our rock and race with this ridiculous, uh, looks like V10 engine in the back. Uh, actually, it's a V12. It's a V12. He's got 12 pipes coming out of it. Uh, looks pretty cool. Kind of old school 50s flare in the front. I really like this one. This one's pretty cool. Uh, just has a giant ramp for a trailer. And, of course, the uh, ramp comes down. This looks pretty good. It doesn't uh, attach to track or anything, so... It is what it is. Of course, the trailer is removable, as always. Oh, they're stupid stiff. There is the date on this one, 2013. So this casting's been uh, out for a very long time. Sorry about the focus. We're having some issues. Um, black chrome, by the way, looks pretty good. like the black chrome on there. S17 for the day code. The trailer and the truck have different date codes. Very interesting. This is, I believe this is the Governor. Yep, this is the Governor. Uh, when this model was a new first edition with black, there were some white variation striping on the side. Uh, and it was stupid expensive for a, a first edition, especially for a generic that nobody cared about. So I thought it was interesting. Now, the ramp does slide up and down, which locks it in there. So it holds the vehicle in there. You shouldn't have to worry about the vehicle taken off on you we'll put that guy in the back all right as i mentioned i do have the recolor for the baja battalion this was a brand new model in the last mix in kind of a copper and gold this one now in red they're getting pretty good with these blisters the blisters just just connect there is our baja battalion of course high quality prints this is a really, really cool one, a off-road racing rig transport, which is just an awesome combination. Looks excellent. I like the ridiculous engine details and stuff. And, of course, there you go. The entire cab rocks individually from the rear set of wheels. And, of course, the whole trailer moves. So this guy can go over some pretty crazy rough terrain, uh, kind of set up to have a, uh, you know, kind of a living quarters or whatever. You could be in there hanging out and whatnot. There's no ramp or anything on the back for it uh no prints on the front either but there's a uh there's 10 fog lights on it though 10 headlights on it which is kind of cool base deets on this guy nothing fancy i do like the little fuel tanks on the side here like i said can go over some pretty insane stuff uh and keep uh contact with the ground which is pretty cool comes with the baja shaker baja bone shaker i think is what it is it says rigid on the night Nothing fancy. Hot Wheels logo in the back. It's an all right model. All right model. Pretty sure this is the Baja Bone Chick. No, it's not the Baja. I'm not sure exactly what that guy is, but looks it looks okay. All right, we do have some Majorette. I uh, picked these up from a local collector in my state uh, who buys stuff from overseas. Toyota 2000 GT. This would have been my first 2000 GT, but I did crack open the uh, series 6 limited edition or series 9 limited edition sorry uh, so that was my first one so this is going to be my second one does have opening hood there with a inline six cylinder down in there pretty flat no uh, real three-dimensional details to it but engine closes up pretty good looks pretty good with these three spoke wheels on it i think uh, major did a fantastic job representing this casting looks very very good Hook assembly on this guy. Lens to front headlights. Of course, it does have suspension. Just like all Majorette models do. Looks good. Looks really, really good. I like that one. Another one. Uh, so this is the Kabaya uh, Majorette. So these are specifically 
made for the Japanese market. Uh, so they come in these short blister cards. Um, they also come with a piece of gum, which is kind of interesting. I don't think these ones are too old. Um, I'm not sure I really want to try the gum, but uh, who knows. The cool thing about this packaging is there's Velcro in the packaging. And so these are just stuck to like a clip strip or display with Velcro. Um, very, very interesting. So very easy just to pull it off, put it back on, pull it off, put it back on. Uh, really, really cool. So they can just kind of restock them and stuff like that, which I think is, is pretty unique. Like I said, it does come with a piece of gum. It's pretty pliable. Maybe I'll try it. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how old they are. So that's kind of the problem. All right, this is our Toyota Hilux Revo. Um, I really, really like this casting a lot. Looks absolutely fantastic. Nice and wide lens headlights, of course. Suspension, of course. Um, kind of has kind of a nice texture to the paint, too. Looks pretty good. Does have a topper on the back. Has a little bit of print on the side. Uh, the topper does come off. It is not fixed. Um, let's see. Uh, maybe this one's fixed. I've taken them off before, but this one might be fixed. There is the deets in the back. It's what a Hilux Revo. Looks absolutely fantastic. Such a good casting. Such a really good casting. There's the deets. I like that one. Suspension's ridiculous. I wish everybody still had suspension. It's just ridiculous. All right, last one I have. Another one of these Kabaya ones. Uh, this is the Honda Civic Type R in green. I do think this one is exclusive to the Japanese market. I uh, could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it is. I don't think the Hilux is. Not all of these are exclusive, so, uh, but they do have quite a few exclusive ones. More gum. There is our Honda Civic Type R. Of course, lensed headlights in the front. A really, really good casting. It's a little bit big, um, but that's perfectly fine. I think it looks fantastic. I love this wheel. It's one of my favorite wheels from Majorette by far. This guy does have an opening hatch in the back. Opens up nice and big. Does have a window on the hatch as well. Looks pretty good. Does have the three spoke, or I'm sorry, three uh, exhaust ports there. Exhaust tips. Losing my train of thought here. Um, just like the real one does. So pretty good representation of that. Prints look pretty good. I do like the green color. They've done quite a few uh, colors of this type R. Uh, they've even done a chase. There's a, a gold one rolling around somewhere. All right, I have some older Hot Wheels premiums that I picked up for cheap. I uh, got it for way cheaper than that. Um, this is the 67 Ford Bronco. Didn't buy it because it's Zoolander. Could care less about it being Zoolander. Um, I just bought it because it was the Bronco, and I thought it was super cool. So we'll just pull our Bronco out. There is our 67 Bronco. I don't think this casting has been used all that much from Hot Wheels. Full deets in the front look pretty good. It says New York on the plate. There's pretty good print on the front, but it does have a brush guard in the front, which kind of takes over everything. Bronco on the fender looks pretty good. Completely open top. A little bit of, little bit of detail in there for the uh, shift knob. It's a different color. Looks like it's just a little bit of print on there, which is kind of cool. Not something we really get from Hot Wheels nowadays. Fort on the back looks pretty good. Not too bad of a casting. G38 is the day code. So many, 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 many years ago, 2014 is the copyright date on that guy. Another one we have. Bleh, another one we have here. James Bond Casino Royale. This is the original release of the Aston Martin DBS. Uh, Hot Wheels did re-release this in a uh, relatively recent uh, pop culture set. Uh, they put the nice, nice 10 spokes on it. This has the GT wheel. This just doesn't look as good. But I picked this up because I kind of wanted to have the old one with the new one. Um, and just kind of got lucky enough to come across this one. Of course, they are the same color because they are represented from the same movie. The GT is pretty good. I mean, the GT wheel is pretty good. The model looks good. Prints look good. Definitely like the details on this. This guy has a plate on the back. Looks pretty good. Uh, other than that, you know, pretty standard fare for a Hot Wheels Premium. G25 is the code on this one. Aston Martin DBS. A little bit of a silver party going on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, next one up. 007 Spectre. This is the Aston Martin DB10. Um... 
Got it for a little bit cheaper than that as well. Pretty much got these for around retail. So I'm pretty happy about that. Now, I didn't have this casting. I don't think I even have one of these castings. This thing is like really on there. I think I might have one of these uh, main lines as loose, but I really wanted a premium. This one also has the GT wheel on it, which just doesn't look all that great. I don't think this casting is bad. Um, it's just not good, I guess, is a way to put it. The GT wheel is, is okay. I just don't really feel like it fits uh, this casting, just like the other Aston Martin. But there is plate detail on there. looks pretty good. Uh, just silver. Just real nice, deep silver. And then just a black base. Nothing fancy with that. Doesn't even look like this one has a date code on it at all, which is... Oh, there it is. J09. It's from forever ago. All right, one more uh, Hot Wheels Premium, some older one. This is from the Silhouettes series. Of course, when this dropped, all I picked up were the two Porsches because that's all I cared about. Then I ended up picking the Silhouette Skyline, um, and I never got the Greenwood Corvette or the Monza. So I found the Monza. I actually did find the Corvette the other day from a buddy, um, so that will be coming uh, soon. I just kind of really decided I really wanted this whole set. So since I already had the other three, pick up the Monza, which is not particularly a uh, desirable casting, I guess you can say. At least not like the RWB Porsche or anything. There is the Monza. It says 76 Monza for the number plaque on the side. I like the brown color for it. It's a very 70s, which is awesome. Um, these wheels look fantastic. A little bigger in the back, smaller in the front. Um, I think this is a pretty cool casting, actually. Looks pretty good. It says Monza in the front. It's actually not too bad. Um, kind of interesting details in the back. So it's got some plate detail. Or I'm sorry, some light detail. Maybe the lights were moved for this particular version. Does have a roll cage in there, though. Looks pretty good, pretty proper. Goodyear down there on the bottom. Same deets on the other side. M07 is the date code. 2011 Mattels. That's it's pretty old. It's pretty old. All right, I got a couple of main lines. Yes, I finally got myself a Supra. I did not pull this off the pegs. I actually had a friend find this for me, so uh, pretty happy about that. Obviously, not a Supra. Um, I don't really, I, don't, I could really care less about the Supra. I just wanted one because it looks pretty cool. The one headlight popped up, looks pretty good. So this is just the last two items I needed from the JK. So JK's done and over with, which is good. Moving on to the K case. Actually, I think the K case may be popping up, uh, at least around me locally now, which is kind of interesting. Let's put this guy other side. And then, yes, this is why the J case is complete. I do have the Reg Treasure Hunt. That is this guy, 95 Jeep Cherokee. The regular hunt of the case, which is actually relatively popular because anytime that there is a licensed casting as a regular treasure hunt, everybody buys it. When there's a generic, everybody leaves it. So, interesting. This one looks fantastic. I like all the muddy details, muddy base, muddy wheels. Looks awesome. There's the deets on the side. It says 1995 for the number. I'm pretty sure it's a 95 Jeep Cherokee, which is cool. Neato on the side as well. Very, very, very interesting. There's the details on the side. There is your little uh, Treasure Hunt logo there on the rear quarter panel. That is where it's hiding. So... Very well hidden. This one looks pretty good. I like all the uh, details. This is part of the interior. So very nice detail for the luggage rack. But unfortunately, it's clear because it's part of the interior. That is, or I'm sorry, part of the window. And then that is part of the interior for all the spare tire detail and stuff in the back. So they super modified or super hot wheels of fine, I should say, that particular casting. All right, we got a couple of oddball things. Picked up this. This is an X-Car Toys. This is a uh, JMC Street Sweeper. This is 164 scale. Unit number 222. It is ridiculously uh, not in American. Uh, it's not in English. But there are some English words on there. So just in case, this is a pretty decent model. It's pretty well uh, detailed and stuff like that. It has some pretty good details to it. Uh, it is mainly die cast uh, for the most part. 
but there is a lot of plastic to it as well. It's, it's pretty average, I would say. So there is your JMC truck. Of course, JMC is a uh, Chinese brand. I don't think that they sell the, them anywhere outside the Asian markets, but I could be wrong. Uh, you know, mirror details and stuff on there look pretty good. They are plastic, so not super fragile, but they look pretty good. Looks very, very good from the side. Does have rubber tires on it, which is a good detail. Those are all these uh, street sweeper elements, and they all move out. So, and they rotate. Although, they don't rotate if you were like to push it down the road or anything like that. A little bit of base details on there. Of course, made in China. Looks pretty good. A little bit of a extra piece here in the back for some street sweeping detail. And then uh, there's the deets in the back. Those are lensed, which is really nice. Really nice detail. Prints look pretty good. A little bit of, uh, you know, warning stickers, uh, warning tape, I should say. It doesn't have chevrons or anything like that, but it uh, looks super good. I like the orange and the white combination. It's very, very nice. Even got a little bit of detail in the back of this little uh, vent in the top. You see the back of the vent is black. Very nice detail. Uh, you see the sides of the mirrors too. I know it's super hard to see uh, in the camera because it doesn't really show up, but there are silver on the inside of the mirrors. So it's got some pretty good detail. Um, and just, you know, for size purposes, it's it's pretty close. It's pretty close to one. Well, it's pretty, it's, it is 164 scale. It's pretty close to like Hot Wheels and stuff like that. So that one looks pretty good, I think. I really like that one. So I was pretty much happy to pick that one up. It was like, 20 bucks is kind of expensive. And then the last one we got in the mix, this is a little bit of an older uh, tarmac. This is the uh, Zonda Sync. Um, I think that's how you say it. Um, now, I didn't pre-cut this one, but that's not that big a deal. This one's more designed for a normal blade cut anyways. Um, we don't keep the plastic on the outside, so... Go ahead and get this guy open so I can show it to you because this does have a opening feature, which Tarmac has definitely been dabbling in, which is cool. So see if we can get the box to cooperate for us. There we go. Ooh. There we go. Get the Zonda to go. It's always a debacle, it seems like, these days. So there is the Zonda. This one in black, red, and white. Looks absolutely fantastic. The wheels look fantastic. Details, prints, all good. Wing looks pretty good in the back as well. Might be just a teeny bit crooked. Uh, but it does have a removable piece in the back. So there is the engine cover that comes off, and then there's the engine. It's not super detailed. Um, but there are a couple of pieces in there. There's a little bit of three-dimensional detail you can see on the side. There's some three-dimensional detail to it. Um, and a little bit of print as well. Looks pretty good. Of course, Tarmacs roll perfectly fine. There is the engine cover. It is metal, by the way, which is awesome. Just kind of sits on there. It doesn't really connect anything. But it does say Zonda. Looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and throw this guy back in there. Put him back in the box. All right, there we go. Put him maybe right there. So there you go. That is Diecast episode 35. Obviously, no Matchbox. Don't you worry. We have the Matchbox convention coming up. You know there's going to be a ton of Matchbox stuff coming to the channel. So we're going to roll out for now. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to come back. More stuff. Always Diecast all day, every day. That's how we roll here at Level M. So we're going to say peace.